More Perfect Union is continuing to put out some incredible reporting. Um, they've been on top of the Frito-Lay story like nobody's business. So the workers at Frito-Lay were working 12-hour days, 84 hours a week. People have died from being overworked. There was uh, barely a raise at all over a decade. It was like 40 cents or something like that. Uh, there's no climate control in the warehouse, and sometimes it was 100 degrees, and sometimes it was freezing. Just really, really, really brutal conditions. So the union uh, went on strike. Now, there has been a bit of a conclusion, but this is kind of underwhelming. Uh, they agreed to give everybody guaranteed one day off a week. The union agreed to it. I mean, listen, this is why you need better governance. I think it's time to implement laws on the maximum amount of hours that anybody could work per week. I think it's time for those laws because this is, uh, and that's ridiculous. They had to fight tooth and nail, and that was the settlement. That was the conclusion. So this Frito-Lay is just vicious. I mean, they really are. By the way, PepsiCo is their parent company. Well, now you're about to get your heart broken. So I'm going to warn you in advance, this is tough to watch. This is tough to watch. You're going to see the story of a worker at Frito-Lay who um, basically had his life ruined by the company. And how they reacted to it is outright criminal. was using a doctor where you press the button and it automatically does what it's supposed to do. I got electrocuted. I was taken to the ER, but the emergency room they took me to was 45 minutes away. We passed four hospitals on the way to the hospital they wanted to take me to. And the reason it is is because they signed a contract with a certain hospital and a certain network. From the very next day after the accident, my husband was never the same. He was working really hard to even just get up on to the side of the bed. Usually he's like hops out of bed and he always puts his clothes on and he shoves food down his throat and he's out the door. You know, in 30 minutes, he was used to it. He was trained to do that in the service. When I say I was healthy as an ox, I was healthy as an ox. We just didn't have any answers. They said he should have been fine, but he wasn't. I didn't get any time off after the incident. I was... <sighs> I had to call off the next day as a sick day. I told you I was in pain. I told you it hurts when I walk. And it was like, okay, you know, are you going to be here tomorrow? I was a site lead, and I know what that entails. Your leadership of the whole warehouse. So if you have to fill in, you have to fill in. I asked for some type of relief, period, because I was still obligated to work, like picking cases and unloading trucks or rotating product on a forklift. I asked for a chair that I could probably, that I could sit in that would make me more comfortable while I'm doing my office work. They denied it. You're either 100% or you can't work. It just felt like they were just trying to push me out. Now, eventually, I got an MRI by my primary doctor, and he showed that I had two herniated discs in my back. And he was like, you shouldn't be doing anything. They could only fix it with surgery. And my husband still had to work this whole entire time. They had to remove two of the discs in my neck because they were bulging into my spinal cord. I wasn't getting enough fluid to my brain. If I didn't have the surgery, the doctor said any small fall or accident or something like that, and I would have been paralyzed from the neck down or dead. I still have to have surgery on my lower lumbar spine. From the moment that he couldn't work anymore and needed short-term disability, Frito-Lay abandoned us. I had to file for short-term disability and then long-term disability. Got approved for long-term disability, but that was months later. So no income coming in. That's a picture of the car. We were driving. They require you to go to the doctor so many times, and the doctor has to say that you're in this condition over and over and over. But guess what? You don't have any insurance anymore through PepsiCo slash Frito-Lay because they cut you off. I had to pay for that out of pocket, too. <laughs> Didn't have the money to do that. So guess what? I borrowed money or used credit cards or whatever I could. <laughs> I even took money out of my kids. <laughs> We had to take from our children to live. And the doctor knew what was going on. So he was like, look, just pay half of what you owe every visit and we'll just take care of the rest of later. I never wanted to have a lawsuit. Just not me. But I did ask for help and I wasn't getting it.
Frito-Lay, Pepsi, Sedgwick, whoever has people following my family. They are stalking us. Just to find something to be like, oh, he's okay. Recording my kids playing in the yard, recording me doing yard work. They follow me in traffic, on the highway, on streets. They followed me when I gave birth to my baby. They followed me to my daughter's school. I took my daughter out of school and decided to homeschool because I don't know if we're safe. I don't know how many people they've given our address and name and information to just to prove my husband wrong. They've done it for years. Why are you fighting so hard to say that I'm not hurt instead of just look at the paperwork, look at the medical stuff, look at everything I've been through. You would think that I'm a bad employee the way that everything has went. I've never done anything wrong to this company or even with this company. I have numerous awards to show that I'm not a person that you just throw away. I knew the sales side, I knew the operation side. I mean, hell, you could have just let me be a lead and just manage instead of physically working. Billion dollar corporations like Pepsi, which owns Frito-Lay, they know this is happening to people and they do nothing about it. My husband shouldn't have to fight for five years over something that took less than five minutes to impact our entire life. He pushed a button at work, a button he can't avoid pushing. He has to push it, it's his job. For a company that talks about diversity and culture and a family-oriented business, family don't just throw you out because you get injured. The company makes over $200 billion a year, okay? It's chips, but my husband, is worth zero dollars to them because he's no longer able to push those chips. Damn. Now, um, the the video is actually a little bit longer than that. I chopped off about a minute at the beginning and maybe a minute at the end. Um, definitely check out the full video. What do you even say? What do you even say? So PepsiCo, the parent company of Frito-Lay, the CEO makes about $15 million a year. Um, Brandon worked for Frito-Lay. He was electrocuted on the job. You heard him say it. He was taken to a hospital 45 minutes away. They passed a number of hospitals to get to that hospital. The reason they did that is because they had some sort of financial agreement, arrangement with that hospital. Right off the bat, that's criminal. Um, he literally had to call out the next day and use a sick day after he was electrocuted. He, they denied him a chair at work, even though... He basically couldn't work without a chair. He was in extreme pain. Maybe the most jarring part of that is actually that they could have given him an office job. It could have given him a position in management. But they didn't. They didn't do that. And so they wanted him to physically work after uh, an injury that basically made it so it was impossible for him to physically work. And they say... Frito-Lay cut off his insurance when he needed it most. His insurance was cut off. There's so many problems that need to be addressed here. I mean, first of all, I, you know, I hope that in this lawsuit he wins and he gets a lot of money and that he's okay. Um, but a lot of this stuff needs to be addressed systemically. I mean, just you can see the problem with employer-sponsored health insurance with this story alone. I mean, I'm sure that's actually a relatively common story. Somebody gets hurt on the job, can't really work anymore, and they have insurance through the employer, but eventually the employer lets them go. And then they don't have health insurance. And then now also they have pre-existing conditions, so it's harder to get health insurance, or if you get, can get it, they jack up the rates massively. Do you not see the problem here? I, I mean, he goes on to say that you're a number to the company. You're property to them. His life was worth zero dollars and zero cents to them. And that, I mean, listen, that should give you a little bit of a light bulb moment. Moment of enlightenment there where you realize like, oh, this used to be the position of the Republican Party in the 1800s. That wage slavery was not that different from chattel slavery. That one is you're owned by the boss and the other one is you rent your labor on the marketplace to the boss. Owning and renting, I mean, it's different, but is it really that different? Have you ever leased a car versus owning a car? Have you ever rented an apartment versus, you know, owning something? Is, is it really that different? You're renting your labor on the marketplace. And they can basically tell you to do whatever, whenever, and the rules are really not there to protect you. Or if they are there to protect you, they're not enforced very well. And so at least when it comes to health insurance, too... They, they use this as a form of control. A lot of people feel like they can't leave a job because they have insurance through a job. 
um, because they'd go through a period where they don't have insurance and they need the insurance. So sometimes people are trapped in shitty jobs as a result of it. But look how quickly they can discard you and throw you under the bus if something happens to you. You have health insurance through them, something happens, you can't work anymore, and then eventually they'll fire you and you don't have insurance anymore. How can anybody look at this system and say it's okay? Even just the profit motive in the system is obviously grotesque because you have a perverse incentive where the companies make more money the more they deny you care. So they try to reject claims as much as possible. I mean, this is... You guys know the story. We told you the story. Frito-Lay, they were working 12-hour days, 84-hour weeks. Some, some work five months without a day off. In the other part of the uh, clip, Brandon talks about how he would work like that. He would work nonstop. Um, and it's just not rewarded. None of it's rewarded. And you're so disposable to them. His life was ruined on the job, and then they basically had nothing for him. Didn't let him keep his insurance. Didn't let him take a managerial job. Didn't give him a payout. Nothing. Threw him under the bus after he had given everything to them. And so, I mean, it's a disgusting, grotesque company, but it, this also is a story not just about Frito-Lay. It's a story about the nature of the system. It's a story about exploitative capitalism. It's a story about the absolute necessity of the government doing basic things like marketplace regulation and having rules. And, um, I mean, we got to get rid of the for-profit private health insurance model. It's, it's criminal. It's criminal. Everybody should just have health care, pay for via taxes, single-payer Medicare for all system. Every other developed country has one version or another of a universal health care system. We got to do that, and we got to have stronger worker protections. You need a maximum amount of hours per week that people are allowed to work. Um, you need stronger protections for the sick and the disabled. They should have accommodated him, but they didn't. I don't know how much you could legislate them accommodating him, but you certainly can have better safeguards so that when something like this happens, it ain't this bad, you know? But really, more worker power is everything. I mean, they have a union there, and they were still sort of rolled, so. If it was a democratic workplace, perhaps things would have gone differently. Um, if they had better rules, perhaps things would have gone differently. The fact that the thing electrocuted him in the first place, how did, was that even allowed to happen? Is there no regulation of whatever the button is that he has to press? Are they that lax with it, with safety standards? Is that another issue here? Looks like it might be. But I hope he wins his lawsuit, and we need better better rules and better regulation and more worker power because stuff like, I mean, it's hard to watch this, man. Guy's life was ruined because he did his job, and then he was totally and utterly abandoned and spied on. It's as criminal as it gets. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.